welcome to overanalyzing every sing single thing in Hoseki no Kuni because you don't know a better way to fill your time because you've been thinking about the series constantly and you really want to talk about it. Anyway, today we're going to look at chapter six. Uh, and spoiler warning for all of the manga, because I am going to try to relate it to the future parts of the manga. Currently, at the time of recording this, only one of five is out, so keep that in mind. Um, feel free to leave in the comments anything that you want to add, anything that you see differently, anything that you might observe that I don't, because I'll probably get things wrong or interpret things a little differently from you. So we'd love to hear your other perspectives. So, and first thing for chapter six, who do you think this character is? I, like, I know that it might just be, um, there's also color, uh, I can bring up the colored version of this, but, um, I was thinking maybe it's, um, Elio, I forgot their exact name, um, because they just got taken, you know? I know that, I don't think it's ever explicitly said, like, who they are, you know? But, um, like, that was a thought I had. Uh, here we go, here it is. So, like, they have red hair? Whoops. So perhaps. But, um, you know, we have the, we have board yellow. That's obviously, is that yellow? See, now I'm second guessing myself. That could be, um, the other one. I, assumably it's yellow. Um, I know that there's other rocks that are gone before boss comes who have yellow hair, so maybe it's not. But well, let me know if you think it's a different character. Actually, it could not be yellow. That's what I'm realizing right now. Because um, all the diamonds wear long sleeve, long long gloves, and long, uh, what is it? Tights, long socks, uh, and so yeah, I don't think that's yellow actually. I just realized that because uh, yellow, you know, I mean they're yellow, wearing the yellow socks, which yellow wears yellow socks, but a yellow also wears yellow gloves, you know. So it could be the other character. This is not the book we were going to go through, but you know. Because, uh, I think that character is shown here. Not there. Not there. Oh, uh, well, you know. They're, then they're probably that other character with yellow hair and long hair whose name I don't know. I think they're Alexandrite's partner that got taken, but I could be completely wrong. Please correct me in the comments if you know better. But I just realized that's, that's yellow. That's, that's not yellow. So, yeah. Because yellow would have the gloves, right? Because all the diamonds wear the gloves, you know. So that that's right. Um, because even Daya's wearing her gloves uh, there, you know. Um, so I think that this... Is this Podparaja? I don't think this is Podparaja, right? It... Eh. It just doesn't look like Podparaja. Let me know if you who you think this is, if it is a character named. I think that maybe this is, uh, maybe Helio, blah 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 blah, whatever their, like, gem name was, that was taken at the beginning of the story that we don't ever get to see. That's my guess, because we've never seen who they are. But let me know your theories for who this character is. Then obviously this is Fosport, obviously. And then um, if you know this character's name, because I know their name is mentioned somewhere and they're viewed somewhere. Um, the, and I'm pretty sure this isn't yellow now because yellow would have the... Uh, their arms would be fully covered. Uh, yeah. Anyway, back to the chapter six, what we're looking at. Uh, all right. So, on to the next page. Cinnabar! The happiest character in the series. Um, as you can tell, I'm not sarcastic. Uh, and then they go, time for work. And they start lonely. And, and this really just shows their loneliness. By the way... Uh, oh, the, the book's over there. One second, let me go grab that book. Um, let me go... I'm on my bookshelf. Okay. So, in this book... Um, this is like my favorite reference book. Uh, where is it? Oh yeah, so here, here's the gloves. I'm gonna make a separate video on just this book, but that's well how I can tell it's my yellow diamond, because there's a certain like code for how the characters wear their gloves and stuff. Anyway, shoes! So, um, this is probably information you didn't need to know, but Cinnabar is the only character with lace-up shoes, uh, and that's mentioned in this book. And the reason why Cinnabar is the only character with lace-up shoes is because the mercury causes any of the other shoes to slip off of Cinnabar's feet, and so it's kind of it's kind of nice and interesting that Cinnabar is the only character with lace-up shoes because they thought of a way to solve that, and they adapted to Cinnabar's like things that Cinnabar needed. Um, and it's just a small detail that you wouldn't ever realize on your own, you know. Like when I read that book, I was like, yeah, you're right. Cinnabar does have different shoes, and I've never thought about 
ask why and they never explain why and it's just so interesting that there is a lore reason for cinnabar having a lace of shoes it's so interesting anyway uh this th this whole thing is just to show how lonely like cinnabar is you know just with like the desolateness and walking and all that no matter how many times i go on patrol Valerians never come at night they'll never need me and that goes back to what i was saying before about cinnabar and the other videos is just that the reason why the night watch is such a terrible job is just that it's not needed it's not it doesn't ha cause anyone to praise cinnabar for it or for anyone to thank cinnabar for doing such a good job because it doesn't really matter to the other gems and that's why the night watch is such a bad job anyway the ending my ted dog of course they think of foss they think about how foss need foss is creating a need for cinnabar um why did I talk to that idiot? Like, Cinnabar is now thinking, Cinnabar doesn't want to get their hopes up because that's like a thing with their like minimal dialogue at the end of the other chapters is they don't want to get their hopes up because they fear that they'll get your, their hopes too up and then Foss will fail them as Foss has done many, many times um, in other things. And they fear that Foss failing them will cause them to be feel even worse. And so that's why they don't want them to get their hopes up about Foss which is something that can be very relatable to some people. It's not like anything is going to come of it. Don't get your hopes up. Like, right here, basically, what I just said. Um, as Foss is telling themselves that, because they don't want to get their hopes up, and they don't want to have... They don't want to have their expectations crushed if Foss isn't able to deliver. Um, yeah, and then... <laughs> Cinnabar sees the thing, sees Diane, and is all shocked. And you see, like, Foss, not Foss, Cinnabar is, like, restraining themselves here, kind of, like, being like, oh, do I really want to use my, like, weird Mercury fighting style, you know? And then it also could just be that they realize it's Daya, the lovely diamond. And, um, you know, they meet. And this is also where I, I must have completely forgot that Daya mentioned that they were born in the same year. Because when they mentioned that later during the, uh, during when they were talking about how they all felt when the gems left, where they're like, Cinnabar, you were born in the same year as, year as Daya, how do you feel? I was like, oh, they are? I didn't realize that they say it here. I, I kind of forgot that, I guess. Um, so it's interesting that Daya and Cinnabar are the same age, which also makes Cinnabar older than Ori. Not like the ages matter, but you know. Um, what are you doing here? Oh, it was dark sleep, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then Cinnabar's worried because Daya is so bright, uh, and you know, um, it kind of shows that Daya is also uh, just as Daya is very receptive to Foss. Daya is also very receptive to Cinnabar too, um, uh, and of course, like <laughs> Cinnabar gets worried when she, when Daya says Foss is gone. But you know, um, here, ah, oh, don't uh, like Foss, Foss, ha, huh? where did you go? Oh no, what what do I do? No, I don't even want to get involved with the Midler, Midler again. And, you know, Cinnabar is just like, no, I don't want to see Foss again. Just probably because Cinnabar already has that, like, faint hope. And I think Cinnabar wants to prevent them from having more hope, too. I mean, just because of that, uh, just because of that not wanting to cause, if their expectations aren't met, not wanting to cause that, like, pain that will come after that. And that's why Cinnabar wants to keep a more pessimistic view. So that if it does happen, it'll be good. But if it doesn't, then they won't, like, emotionally die. Um, anyway. But, you know, Cinnabar is like, no, you know. Aw, oh, don't read my mind. We're friends. Gems. Born in the same year. Help me look. And so, um, it's, it's kind of nice that Daya recognizes, like, isn't afraid of Cinnabar. Like, Daya grabs Cinnabar here because Daya doesn't worry. And, uh, you know. Uh, Daya's, like, saying that they're friends because they're born in the same year and stuff like that. <laughs> and then uh, Cinnabar kind of, like, I think this is them kind of both looking for Foss after. Um, the relief. Don't do that. I mean, you know, Cinnabar's like, uh, now I have to see Foss. Look at Cinnabar. And then as, as soon as Cinnabar realizes that Daya's found Foss, Daya, Cinnabar's like, I'm leaving. And then Cinnabar's like, this is not Foss. Daya's on something. Daya must have finally eaten the weird mushrooms on that one side of the clip, you know. Um, anyway, and then Daya's like, remember Cinnabar? Uh, and Cinnabar's just confused. Oh, look at that happy face. Is this your pet? you shaved. Um, and it kind of sees that, like, Cinnabar kind of, like, doesn't really 
understand them or kind of you know uh because and then there's that bat battle freak i don't understand how you diamonds think. um and so it kind of just shows that like cinnabar doesn't really understand the other gems because cinnabar doesn't really go near them that often and stuff like that well actually this is foss foss Fovolite, the gem that helps you to remember and cinnabar's like uh <laughs> see <laughs> i don't want to know and, and then cinnabar's just confused i'm like uh so you're saying the Lunarians brought a giant snail here, it ate 3.5, and it's kind of interesting that, like, Cinnabar refers to Foss by Foss's hardness, and that's something that only Cinnabar does. Um, so that's why it's such a callback when Foss calls Cinnabar 2, um, during the, like, part where Cinnabar kind of invades again. And, um, and that's why it's kind of hurtful that way, because... Like I said, Foss and Cinnabar kind of have a reverse arc. So Foss becoming more antagonistic towards Cinnabar and using the term like two to refer to them kind of shows how they have kind of gotten to where Cinnabar is at the beginning of the story. Uh, where like Foss is rejected by everyone and everyone fears Foss. And when Foss interacts with people, Foss has to put them in their place in a sense, you know, like say, like reminding them that like, Foss is a hardness of 3.5, and then uh, Foss reminding later that Cinnabar is a 2. And you know when uh, Foss is... Is that Hoffman? When Foss is reformed by Rutile at the beginning, and Foss says, like, oh, I don't think I'll ever forget that day where uh, Cinnabar, like, saves them for the first time. Of course, like, we're not really sure if Foss remembers that at all, and I don't think they do. When they get there but you know what foss does remember i believe foss does remember cinnabar calling them 3.5 and that's why foss calls them two and of course that's the only time where it's mentioned to foss that cinnabar is two so foss remembers that throughout the course of the story even if foss forgets other bits and pieces and so foss saying that i don't think i could ever forget that is technically true we don't remember how we don't know how much foss remembers of that incident but what Foss does remember is that Cinnabar is a is uh is two, and Cinnabar is the only character that Foss can speak down to in that way. That's why it hurts while later. But anyway, uh, Narians brought a giant snail here, and, they, and now the idiots turned into this. Uh huh. And then Cinnabar, because Cinnabar is very clever, you know. Cinnabar immediately figures out. Really think these things happen, huh? And. The hurt, you hurt the snail's shell before it started eating, right? Oh, the mirrors dropped it right, 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 blah, blah, blah. Oh, so here's the part where Daya attributes, because Daya and Bort both crack the shell, remember? From, I think that's in, is that in chapter two? Yeah, so Daya and Bort, here, right, like right here, Daya and Bort both attack the shell and open it. But here, Daya only attributes it to Bort. Well, the Nairns dropped it pretty hard, and Bort stomped on it and opened it, and opened a hole in it. Daya doesn't even mention themselves here because Daya, like I think I brought up in the last chapter, and I'll bring up again here. Daya, even if Daya helps, even if Daya helps Bort and contributes something, maybe because of how Bort is so harsh in like berating Daya for getting in the way whenever Bort, whenever Daya tries to help is why Daya never credits themselves with helping or being a part of it. Because it was both Daya and Bort that did that. But when Daya speaks it to Cinnabar, Daya only brings up Bort, because that's all Daya remembers. Daya doesn't remember that Daya also contributed. Um, yeah, and then Cinnabar's just thinking, I was wondering if Bray could see ya. Hey, because, you know, Cinnabar doesn't actually want to help, but, you know, well, you know. You mean I know how to change them back, don't you? <laughs> I like how Daya is just like, like translating what Cinnabar is thinking, you know? You don't know that. I don't even didn't even say anything. Everyone says that Foss Yeah, and this this line's kinda sad too. Everyone says they think Foss should stay like this. Do you think so too? Um and I think Daya is saddened by that, like seeing that people don't think that highly of Foss and is kinda like you know, Daya and Cinnabar are the same age. You know, Daya is kind of like appealing to the person who Daya sees more similar to them. Uh, like, asking if they think so too. And of course, Cinnabar's like, no, actually, I'd rather that you're gone for good. 
Uh, then, and then here, Cinnabar just goes off complaining about Foss and all that. And you just see all this text and how the texts get more dense like as it goes on. Uh, I love that uh, Ingramus, you know? And Daya sees, I think Daya is like more knowledgeable in like what people actually feel. And I think that's like where Daya and Bort really differ is because Bort doesn't really get that feeling wise. Like how Zircon like thought that how Bort was acting made them hate, hate them where that wasn't what Bort was saying at all. Um, uh, but Daya is very receptive to how people feel for that stuff. Cinnabar, it falls within me or something. It's just so funny. Um, and, and, you know, Cinnabar's like, no. Anyway, where did you get that idea? Um, what did the way... Yeah. And I, I find it interesting that Daya is so interested in stuff like that. It makes sense character-wise because, you know, diamonds are used for engagement rings and stuff. But, yeah, it's kind of funny. Um, well, that's all I'm hearing from you. And you haven't talked this much in a hundred years. And so it's kind of like nice to see that like Cinnabar like Cinnabar this Cinnabar talking about Foss a lot also shows that Cinnabar's been thinking about Foss a lot even though it's in a negative sense uh it's it's shows that that Foss is at least on Cinnabar's mind <laughs> um and I think like what I just said there that's why the ending is so sad <laughs> or it's so catastrophic because um People often think that the opposite of love is hate, but a better opposite can also just be apathy, not caring at all. And that's where Cinnabar is at the end of the story. Like, right here, even though Cinnabar is saying they hate Foss, like, they, they just, did, yeah, I've always hated the way that you, you have, oh, that's, that, that, well, that's diet. But, you know, the way that, like, Cinnabar is, like, constantly saying that they hate Foss, they want Foss to not exist anymore, or something like that, um, it shows that they thought about Foss a great deal and that this is something that they have a strong opinion about because it's something they care about even if it's in a negative sense and even if they're lying about it but uh, but um that shows that like even here with Foss like th this is what we like what this right here is what we thought Cinnabar would say when Jade asked Cinnabar at the end of the series what they think about Foss like you expect Cinnabar to say like uh, you know, like that they loathe that ignoramus. <laughs> like you expect Cinnabar to have some hatred in their heart for how Foss acted towards the end, like crushing all the gems and turning them into Valerians, all that stuff. But Foss, but Cinnabar doesn't. Cinnabar is just apathetic, and that's worse because here it shows that Cinnabar at least cares enough to give thought to Foss, to give thought to how Foss acts and who they are. But when we get to the end of the story, they aren't giving any thought to that. They're just apathetic, and that's what makes it sadder with the with the evolution of their relationship. Because we, even though like Cinnabar is saying such of these strong emotions, we know deep down that they care. They have some sort of feelings towards Foss, and later those feelings are completely gone, and that's just what makes it even more heartbreaking. Because they become apathetic instead of caring in a negative or positive way. Um, <laughs> this is just a cute scene, you know. Uh, that's just some weird shell snail. Shelled creatures eat rocks. And, you know, this is where it, it, we get the, like, lore that, uh, you know, Ichikawa uses later when they talk about how they might need to genocide the snails. That was an interesting revelation, wasn't it? Anyway, for the rocks that they keep eating and turning into shells and stuff like that. Um, I don't care if I never hear that annoying and consider it Ben's voice again. Uh, and here, like, they're kind of lying about this, but, um, that's probably something that Cinnabar would say at the end of the series. Uh, they don't say it with that much aggression, but, you know, it's kind of like the thing of, like, they're apathetic to Foss, they don't care. Like, you just get over all that and they don't care, that's, like, how they feel. Uh, that idea again should just stay at the bottom of the pond, filling, filling in the holes in the shell, shell forever, you know, because like they're being harsh but you know Foss being at the bottom of the pond could also indicate all the gems being on the moon and Foss staying on the earth uh like just being separated from the gems in that way like it could be again over analysis it could be foreshadowing that which we've never thought about but um 
useless corn is better off as a mint green shell powder. And, you know, this is this the fact that Cinnabar is saying this, Cinnabar wants Daya to resurrect Foss, you know. Unless you think differently, leave it in the comments. I mean, Foss became a part of the shell, you know, Daya is finally getting it. And it sh this also shows how clever Cinnabar is. Because Daya didn't get this, and none of the er other characters pointed it out, even if they did care enough to point it out, they didn't. Um, if we collect all the green spots, of course, we're immortal, so it, it was. Work. And again, Daya, like earlier, was like, oh, if we melt, can we, do we actually die? Is what Daya was asking. And so Daya's yet reaffirming the fact of, yes, we are immortal, we can't die, like as a good thing. Um, <laughs> so it was like, don't do it, leave that jerk alone. There was never any point taking that dead weight. You know, this is just Cinnabar being Cinnabar. Um, and another thing to note is that, like, it shows that Cinnabar is saying all these angry things. Once Daya disappears, we can see that Cinnabar's act goes away. Um, Cinnabar's act of hatred goes away. And that's, and even in this act of hatred that they say towards Foss, we can see that they care. Like, they're not apathetic like they are at the end of the series. Um, maybe I'll wait a little longer before I call you a liar. Call the idiot a liar. Uh, yep, so... Where have you been? It's late. I figured it out. We can bring Foss back, you know. And again, Bored has always looked as, like, a high and mighty character, and that's kind of how Daya sees them, you know. I have to get everyone. And then they gather everyone to collect Foss. And they're using the jellyfish light so that they can work better in the dark. Because, uh, you know, their movements get slower at night. And they all work together to bring Foss back. And... I'm trying to think how this could relate to later in the series. Let me know if you think of anything else. But it's kind of interesting how, if I use that analogy of Foss being at the bottom of the river, the same as, like, when they're all Lunarians and Foss being on Earth, is that none of them care. Like, Daya is the one who rallies them all up to care and to bring Foss back. But now, but that's what makes the later series so heartbreaking, is because they're all apathetic to if Foss comes back or not. Um, and it also shows that they're able to identify Foss by their color they're they're looking for the color right the like the like turquoise color that foss is that's how they identify foss whereas when foss is left on the earth foss's color is almost completely gone from them and so that kind of relates to them not seeing foss because it's not the same material <clears throat> this series is so good you know uh and then you know and this is actually Cinnabar's hand, because this is supposed to show, like, Cinnabar reforming Foss. And I think it's supposed to show that it's because of Cinnabar that Foss is back. It's because of Cinnabar that Foss has been saved, like, multiple times, right? And it just shows that the linkage between Cinnabar and Foss is really handled so well in this manga. And um, because Foss sets out on their entire journey because of Cinnabar. The only reason why Foss has a purpose or something to do is because of Cinnabar. And... The only reason that Cinnabar is staying around is because of their small hope in Foss and thinking that Foss can maybe get it better. And they use that notebook and the encyclopedia notebook to remember that. And that's why when the encyclopedia notebook completely breaks down and like, because we see it later that like, you know, all the pages are gone and the wood is like all cracked into pieces and stuff later. But by that point, um, Cinnabar doesn't need that hope anymore, and it kind of shows that Cinnabar goes away from Foss at that point in the story because they no longer need that hope because Foss fulfilled their promise of giving Cinnabar a role at that point, uh, which their role is to be basically be a battle strategist against Foss. What a lovely story! Anyway, and see, this is Cinnabar showing, really just showing their connection and how Cinnabar is saving them and stuff. They come back, and then, you know, this is just a funny scene. One thing I thought about is all the characters in the background here are characters that don't come to the to the moon with Foss. I don't know if that is anything. That's just something I noticed. You did this to be, you know, talking to Venture Um uh, and, and, you know, all the gems are saying, like, they're sorry for wanting Foss to be like that, I guess. Smarter than Foss. It's cuter than Foss. Oh, yeah, right. You think that you'll get off the foot. Um... And you see how Foss is talking, and they're all kind of concerned. Um, that doesn't mean you... And again, you, Jade and Rutile don't go to the moon with Foss. Um, you can just say whatever in front of them. No one, that's not the excuse. I do not appreciate it. And they're the ones who mainly helped. Like, they organized it, even though Dio's the one that rallied them. And then Rutile's the one who always puts Foss back together. 
Um, like I said, Foss, who are you talking to? Huh? And then Foss looks back. And again, like, there is the separation of, like, I don't know if this means anything. But, you know, the separation of Daya and Foss. Daya goes with Foss to the moon. And these characters don't. I don't know if that's anything. But that's just something I thought about while rereading this chapter. Um, and then, you know, Hendrikosis and stuff like that. I don't know if any anything to else to add. Let me know if you analyze anything different. This, I don't know if I have anything super analysis over here. This is just, you know, cute little <laughs> comic and stuff. Um, I guess with this, I, I really like these. Because it does give show, like, the day-to-day -day life and the fun aspects of living where Foss lives. I will take any side character content. This is one of those stories where I wish there was a little bit more filler, just so that we could have more time with the characters. Because um, there really is no filler in Jose no Kuni, which is great. But sometimes I wish there was, <laughs> um, you know, and it's just that um, you can Daya have a sort of relationship here, I guess, because they're on a team um, and then Daya bring Bort. And it seems like Daya brings Bort in just as a help. So it does seem that Daya does like Bort's help to a certain extent, I guess, uh, you know, at least against Bort, you know. <laughs> and um, I guess something I can get out is like Yuko Springs Jade because you know, Jade is helpful, and then, you know, instead of Foss bringing Yellow or any of the other characters, Foss brings Sensei, or Kongo, so maybe that could be something, um, but it just says that Foss also probably has a greater connection with Kongo than the other gems, just because Kongo, you know, Kongo cares more about Foss than the, than the other gems, I think I can say that, um, and so I think that's why Foss has, like, such a greater connection with Congo that totally stays that way. And, uh, yeah, nothing bad happens in this story. But um, I think it also is just, like, the reason why Foss and Congo's relationship is so focused on is because of the fact of how it devolves so drastically. And the fact that Foss basically takes his place later on, you know? Anyway, I just kind of analyzed the four, the little comic. So... Yeah, we made it to the end. So, let me know your analyses of this chapter or anything else with this volume. And then we'll be on the next volume next time. All right. Thank y'all. Bye.